All right, let's get to it. Uh, here is our layers file, and um, you might. Well, let's just let's just start breaking stuff. That'll be fun. Uh, so this is going to be broken for a little while, and we're going to do our best to keep it clean. Let's create an object and let's call it state. This will hold all of the things that are common to our layer objects below. So we're kind of just going to do this again. So let's just copy it and paste it up here. Um, do a little formatting. OK, good. Um, so first thing you, you know or should know from JavaScript, we're not in the this world anymore. We're in objects. So the way we declare uh, the properties of objects is this way. Right, and uh, no dangling commas. Cool. So that's one way to do it. Here's the here's the problem. <laughs> Darn it. There's always problems. It you can't really refer back to something um, that comes before it in this way. There's no way to do it um, because this is not being gone. Uh, the <laughs> words English. These are not being set sequentially. This is all happening at one time. It's saying, this is our operator, the equal sign, and it's evaluating, the system is evaluating whatever is on the right side of that equal sign all at the same time. So whereas here, there are separate equal signs so that sides actually has a value when we get down to setting this.num shapes. And it says, what is the value of this.sides? Oh yeah, I set it to this. Okay, let's make them the same here. There are no operators, so those are not happening. So what needs to happen is we need to separate stuff that's going to be dumb, like this, and stuff that's smart, that needs to reference a previous uh, value or that is going to go get a value. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to create an object, uh, a function called setState. And we're, it will accept any object that we give it we're going to call that state as you can imagine we're probably going to pass whatever's in here into here and it's going to return whatever is inside of state along with a whole um, bunch of other stuff what we are setting up is the architecture we talked about before using just our words which i don't use very well remember we said they they all share common uh attributes and then each layer modifies that object of at full of attributes. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to have some static stuff up here, and then we're going to have the ability to modify it however we want down here. So what am I talking about? Well, um, here's how we're going to do it. Let's start separating stuff that is going to stay up here and stuff that isn't. So side, let's go one by one, equal to sides. That's OK, because that exists as a variable outside of the scope of this, um, this operation num shapes does not so let's take it out how are we going to do this well we are now in a new object uh, a new function and we have this this thing called state and let's say in a future world we're going to pass it whatever we create in here so we can say let's modify the object that we've been given by saying state.num shapes so now we're adding something to the state variable or the state object and we can set it equal to something. Now we can start doing our, our operations one by one. And we have access to whatever's inside there. If we're passing it this object, then it has a sides value. So we can say state.sides. Cool, let's keep going. Um, let's see, what else, what else? Angle. OK, this is also going to be relying on a previous thing. So that's not good. Let's take that out. Whoops, not all of it. And put it down here. That was terrible. Let's get rid of this. So here we have state.angle, and it's going to be set equal to something. That thing is going to be state.num shapes because it's already been set up here. All right, let's keep going. Um, the This is fine. It's just a number. Steps out, it's just a number. Single step is being calculated using previous values. So we need to put that down here. OK. Crystal size divided by 2 divided by state dot steps out. Uh, and I think we have one more here. We've got layer color. And then you, you might have a question about this. And I'm anticipating a question. I'll, I'll get to it here. 
equals get random from palette. That stays the same, no problem. It's just gonna reference that function outside of here and it's gonna return something back. So you might be thinking, well, why don't we just do all of this in one place? And you're right, we could do that. We could say, um, you know, we could we could make this into a whole function and we could put inside of here, you know, create this object and then underneath that we could modify the object, but that's not very clean. Uh, the sort of thinking behind functional programming is that everything should accomplish a very small task and be super clean about how it does it. So this is super clean because we know that everything inside of it is set, nothing is is calculated or dynamically and that here whatever we get in is going to be static will be modified and then we're going to return the result of our modifications so these accomplish different tasks and that's why they're separate the other great thing about this as we will see later is that we can pass all kinds of stuff into state and get back a, a, a predictable result and that's kind of the whole point all right, and we're gonna get rid of all this class layer stuff too, which is gonna make everything much cleaner. So why don't we start doing that? We've kind of already got rid, rid of that stuff. So what does this become? What do these extensions of the layer class become? Well, they become functions. And I'll show you what that looks like now. So we can say circles, and it, can res it will also be initiated with a state and it's going to have all this stuff in it. Okay, so we come to the constructor. We know that we don't need a constructor, which means we don't need super. Ooh, no. And we've got all this stuff. Let's reformat. All right, so what does this stuff mean? Well, we can modify, again, whatever the state. Remember remember, we had this stuff, and, and it was going to... It would extended layer. So layer is now basically state. And we were modifying whatever it gave us when we came in and created these layers. We took the state and modified that object. So we're gonna do that again. We're, we're gonna assume that whatever we get out of set state is our fully, fully built object, state object, and that's gonna come into our new function and we have the ability to overwrite or add to that here. So you can see a pattern here. Every time we do something new, we take a static object, that's this what we're calling state here, and we're adding to it or modifying it. We're taking it, we're adding to it or modifying it, and we return something. And that's we're just gonna keep doing that. Uh, here, uh, instead of returning a render function, instead of just in adding a render function to a class as an attribute, we're going to return an object that includes a function called render. I'll say that again we have to return something here. And what we are returning is not an entire, um, ob it's not an, an entire um, instance of a class. All we really need is this render function. This function has knowledge of state. It is modifying that, fine, but state still exists. So it knows about it. It's going to be wrapped up in here in a thing called closure. And you can look that up too, it's spelled like this. So that when we use this function, no, not W, I mean, you can use W3, it's all fine, but I find that the Mozilla is a little bit better. Um, basically what's gonna happen is it remembers what state is when we run this function so that when later we call the render function, it knows that these things exist, layer color, num shape, shape size. The only difference is the thing that we need to start changing is anytime we see the word this, it should be state because this doesn't exist anymore. It's now wrapped up as state, okay? So the whole point again is we need to run a function to create something. That function takes in a state and will return an object. Oh, this should have been, uh, should have been this, I believe, yeah, right? Uh, and this also should look different. Render is just a key, and what we are returning is a function. All right, 
So I didn't do that very gracefully. But again, uh, the function, right, we're modifying the state, and then we are returning an object. And that object can have anything in it. That object happens to have a render function. This is very much like what we were doing, right? So we were changing an object, and then we had this render function inside of our object, simple lines, and we would later call dot render. Well, if we're returning an object, we can definitely call dot render on it. And what it will do is look up that value and say, well, what is dot render? Oh, it's a function. Let me run that function. And when it gets to state dot layer color, because of closures, because this all exists in the same place, all in the same block, it knows what all of that stuff is ahead of time, which is really nice. So we can add other qualities to this. Why don't we give it a name? And we'll call it circles. And you could add other functions here. Uh, you could add other qualities to it here. And you could continue to make this object whatever you want. It is just a plain JavaScript object. It is not an instance of a class. This is all that we're creating. This is much lighter. It's much leaner than the other stuff. So in the next video, I'm just going to do this for all of the rest of them. If you want to follow along, great. If you feel like you could skip that repetition and you want to try to do it yourself, go ahead, knock yourself out, and you can join us in the, in the following video after that where we start to test this and um, start to change some of our codes so that we can see it on the screen.